This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining Empowering Women Veterans with impactful resources um, and information uh, hosted by CalVet and in partnership with San Francisco VA Healthcare Systems. My name is Jennifer Rudquist, and I work for the California Department of Veterans Affairs. I am a CalTAP training coordinator. My job is to assist service members, veterans, and their families learn about and access their earned benefits. Just a little bit about me. I was born into the military life. My dad served 20 years in the United States Air Force. Naturally, when the time came, um, I followed my father's footsteps and I joined. And with pride and honor, I can say that I am also a veteran. I served from 1996 to 2000 as a security forces airman. Additionally, I continue to serve our country um, as a military spouse. My husband is currently active duty on his 24 year of active duty service in the United States Air Force. And recently, really cool, my son and daughter both enlisted this summer in the United States Air Force and they continue the tradition. So I can safely say I've been in all of your shoes and I can truly relate to each and every one of you guys that are attending today. I want you guys to know that CalVet is here for you guys um, and that we understand all the hardships you guys have had to endure to ensure our country's freedom. So we say thank you for your ser service and supporting the United States Armed Forces and now let us serve you. Um, being a part of this community and, um, and serving you is more than a job. Um, uh, when I help a service member, a veteran, dependents, it's like I'm serving my family. Um, I'm so excited that you guys joined today's uh, presentation because it's packed with information that I know is going to make a huge impact on your lives. Um, we have an awesome presentation planned for you with guest speakers that include Annette Hulover. He, she's our CalVet Central Valley Link. And from CalVet Women's Division, we have Acting Deputy Secretary Zochi Rodriguez Murillo. And also, we have analyst Julene Caricas. Um, in addition to these presenters, we also will round out this webinar with Dr. Kayla Joseph from San Francisco VA Healthcare System. So, just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin the actual webinar information part of this presentation. We want to encourage everyone here to utilize the mute function and turn off your cameras. This helps to assist with um, distractions and also helps with bandwidth. Um, in addition, another function we want we ask that you guys utilize is the chat function. Um, with so many so much great information. There's going to be some questions out there. And to keep the webinar moving, and um, we found the best format is to keep all the questions for the end of the webinar. So what you're going to do is you're going to uh, send all your questions in the chat to CalVets or Vet Services or the organizer. From there, Derek Rose, he's another CalTAP coordinator, he's going to record and field your questions to the subject matter expert for your question. And at the end of the presentation or the webinar, we will have 30 minutes allocated just for all those uh, to address all those questions. Now let's go over the items that you guys um, received um, in your emails. Um, the first thing is this PDF, um, the PDF of the CalVets resource book. This is a resource book. It is like gold, you guys. This is my resource book. It's tabbed up. It's, it's amazing. Um, it's going to have a lot of what we're going over today, plus much more. Um, it's basically a survival guide for veterans, honestly. Um, I was separated over 15 years before I got my hands on this, and it, I was blown away by all the different resources that are out there and benefits that are out there for us. Um, literally, your benefits are in your fingertips with this book. The next thing that you guys received in the mail was this link map. It's a contact flyer. Um, later on in the presentation, you will learn about what links do and who, uh, who they are. Basically, there are CalVet's boots on the ground. They know about the resources in your local areas. All right, let's go on to the presentation. So again, so again my name is Jennifer Redquist, and I'm a CalTAP training coordinator. So what is CalTAP? So CalTAP is designed to inform and connect veterans of all eras of their earned state and federal benefits. And we do this and support and assist veterans and their families um, as their needs change over time through five different pathways. That's core curriculum, education, employment, entrepreneurship, and service providers. 
Now, everything that I'm going over, again, is also in this resource book. And the PDF looks exactly like the resource book you have in your hands. So how can you use CalTAP online? So maybe you're not always carrying around this resource book or you're not, you don't have that PDF. Your resources are, uh, your benefits are still at your fingertips in your phone. So you're just gonna Google um, CalVet. You can do a scoot CalVet, you can do California Department of Veterans Affairs, whatever it may be. But the website is calvet.ca.gov and open that up. This website is phenomenal. It's so incredibly user-friendly and I highly recommend that you guys play with it. Can you hear me now? We can hear you clearly, Jen. You're fine. Okay, great. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so this is CalVet's website. It is incredible. And I highly recommend that you guys check this out and play with. Do not be afraid of getting in rabbit holes in this website because these rabbit holes always lead to carrots and carrots are your earned benefits and that's money in your pocket, you guys. So uh, everything's just a click away. If you want to find out about lo home loans, it's right there. Housing, it's right there. Healthcare, education, everything's right there. Find your local county veteran service office right there. Everything is at your fingertips. So um, to get to our portal though, you're gonna go, you're just gonna click on CalTAP right here. So it's gonna open up and it's gonna have all of our pathways right here. And within those pathways, there are modules for those diff specific things that you're looking for. So we're gonna start off with core curriculum. And this is uh, also uh, part of, um, I'm sorry, let me go back one more time. I skipped that, I'm so sorry. Uh, so here's our pathways. But if you look farther down, in addition to this webinar, CalVet, um, host all kinds of different types of webinars for employment or for just general benefits um, for minority veterans, um, all sorts of great things. Since COVID's happened, we've expanded so much our outreach and it's easier than ever to get um, information and resources and share this with other people. Um, so you just press on archives right down there to see all the webinars we've already done. And you can see Right here, this is actual recording, just like this webinar is recorded um, and will be on the website within a few days. Um, we have other recording of webinars. And then there's a PDF of the presentation that we had also right there. So um, we're gonna go into core curriculum and from there you're gonna see all the different modules within, uh, within core curriculum. And we're gonna focus on California benefits. So once you click on that module, you're gonna, it's going to open up with all of these um, documents. You're going to just click on whichever document that you're interested in. And within those documents, there's going to be uh, links to different websites that you might need or even links to the actual forms to apply for those benefits or that assistance that you need. It's fantastic, you guys. So if you're not interested in going on the website maybe you don't like using a computer maybe you like the hard copy everything that uh that is uh in uh about california benefits benefits is also in your resource book right here and it starts on page 13. it's chapter one so california benefits we have the college tuition fee waiver all this information you guys um it may not apply to you but Take a little note of it and please share this. Help us outreach to as many service members and veterans and families as possible. The college tuition fee waiver is fantastic. This waives the fees of uh, California tuition for any state, um, federal, public, uh, universities for your de for dependents. Um, so you would have to have a disability. The veteran needs to have a disability rating by the Department of Defense of zero to one hundred percent. Zero percent does not mean that you did not apply. It means that you applied, and the Department of Defense is saying yes, something did indeed happen to you while you were in the service, but it doesn't affect your daily life. So you have to apply for that. Once you do that, this fee waiver can waive the tuition fees for your children to go to college. It's fantastic. To find out more about that, I'm gonna show you uh, to, to get to that on our website. Um, the next thing is the designation driver's license in California. 
This is fantastic, you guys. You have no longer have to carry your DD Form 214 around. You can just show your ID and there is a designation on your license that says veteran that you can carry around instead of carrying that DD Form 214. To apply for that, you're just gonna go to your local county veteran service office. The next thing I wanna talk about is a motor vehicle registration fee waiver. This is a fantastic. This waives the registration fees of one of your vehicles. If you are uh, rated by the Department of Defense with a disability that interferes with your mobility, it's fantastic, check it out. The next thing is reduce fishing and hunting licenses. There is reduced fishing and hunting license if you have a disability rating from the Department of Defense of 50% or more. To find out more about those, you're gonna go to wildlife.ca.gov, but fishing and hunting, or for the parks pass, you're gonna to go to parks.ca.gov. Now there's a lot of links that I'm gonna be going through right now, but I want you uh, that I want you guys to know that Derek is on the other line and he's gonna be putting all those um, different links in the chat for you guys. And we can also send out a link, uh, a document with the links also. Um, disabled veteran property tax exemption, this is fantastic. It saves so much money for veterans. Um, if you are rated by the Department of Defense at 100% disability rating, you can have up to $150,000 um, of your property tax exempted. To find out more about this, you go to the property assessor's office in your county. Um, and then there's also business licenses, tax and fee exemptions out there. To find out more about those, and if you qualify for those, just go to your county assessor's office where you pay your taxes, your business licenses and such, and um, show them your ID that says you're a veteran or your disability uh, or your um, letter from Department of Defense um, showing your rating. Then also, Calvet has some great divisions. One of their divisions is Calvet Home Loans. Calvet Home Loans uh, originate, the home loans are originated, processed, closed, and for the life of the loan, Calvet services your loan. We want to help California get California veterans get into homes. We work one-on-one -on -one with you to get you guys into homes. So if you had doors closed for this reason or for that reason because you PCS or divorce or whatever may happen and you have some challenging uh predicaments that causes you to have issues with trying to get a loan, please look into Calvet Home Loans and I'll show you how to get that on our website also. Calvet Women's Division is going to be here. They're gonna to talk to you all about their division, all their resources, information. Minority divisions is advocacy, their advocacy and outreach also for minority divisions. They can help you guys with naturalization services also. They also have a, por a website, um, a portal on our website. Calvet Homes for Long-Term Care. This is uh, long-term care for uh, veterans. Um, some of the best in the country. Um, absolutely amazing. You can also find out more about those, about what kind of services we provide. And it's basically like a base that um, that people, uh, that veterans can grow old with their camarade, um, camarad, uh, the people that, uh, people just like them, I'm so sorry. And then Calvet has Calvet cemeteries. There's three cemeteries in uh, California that you can choose um, to go to, and we can show you about that on our website also. So here's our website, and it has all those different programs that I was talking to you that you can learn more about. Um, so when you're on the main page at the top, it says Calvet programs, just click there, and it's a drop down menu. From there, you can go to Calvet Homes, learn about our home loans, uh, minority veterans, you can, add, there's a phone number, Number and an email so anything that you don't find on their website if you need assistance they can help you the same thing for uh, the veteran homes for long-term care is right there so everything is right there and then everything's a click away also um, if you want to find out about your education it's right here employment health care everything's right here please play with it I know that I went over quite a bit of information and really fast, but I want you guys to know that Calvet is here for you. Just give us a call if you have a hard time navigating something or if you remember me talking about something, but you can't remember how to get to it or you wanna learn more about it, please give us a call or email us. Um, my name is Jennifer Redquist. This is my um, email address. You guys can email me at any point and I will be happy to serve you. Um, with that, I'm gonna hand the floor over to our local interagency network coordinator for the Central Valley, Annette Hulover. Are you there, Annette? Good morning, everyone. My name's Annette Wallover. I am the link. Um, basically, I'm a field rep for the state of California, one of the eight um, that assists veterans with their benefits. Um, I, myself, I'm a United States Army veteran. Um, I served from 1975 to 1978. Um, I was stationed in West Berlin. 
Um, and it really wasn't until 10 years ago that I realized I was a veteran. A lot of times I used to say I was in the army and it's because of programs like this that I've taken advantage of my benefits. Next slide, please. So you can see that uh, CalVet has divided the state into eight regions. Each color is, a, is a, a region with a coordinating link. I'm the Central Valley link covering Stanislaw to Kern County, representing about 144,000 veterans. Um, we work independently within our counties, but we also work together as a team to assist each other because we are aware of all the different resources available through federal and state agencies. We work with our county and local agencies to get more specific information. Um, and if you need to find the link in your area, you can always go into the CalWet website under search, type in L-I-N-C, and it'll give you the contact information for your link. Next slide, please. So what we do is we provide outreach to current service members and prior service military, military members and their families. So we do outreach to, this morning I did a workshop at the Moore Naval Air Station. Um, so we're, con we're, we're getting in reach with those veterans or soon to be veterans or active duty, as well as um, community college, who a lot of times maybe recently separated veterans. And then we make referrals and work directly with established service provider networks. And we do this by getting out into the communities, uh, working with our CVSOs who are probably our boots on the ground, um, additional to us, um, and the other uh, organizations that we work with so, so we can make those direct referrals. Uh, we assist with local emergencies. Um, last year, I was um, actually assisted with the um, LAC, the local assistance center evacuees uh, in Fresno for the um, Creek Fire and actually was deployed to Porterville for the uh, SQF Fire evacuees. Um, in some cases, their entire properties were destroyed, all the information that they needed. Um, and by working with the networks that we have, like County Veterans Service Office, I was able to get replacement paperwork, such as uh, a D Torm 214s or some military records. And also working with the uh, CalVet home loan agent, we were able to acquire some certificate of eligibilities so these people could go forward in, in purchasing either a VA or CalVet home. We also are right now um, at fielding the calls from headquarters. A lot of offices are working remotely. So the so anyone calling the 1-800 number in Sacramento is being forwarded out to us agents. And it doesn't matter if I get a call from Klamath Falls or from San Diego, because I'm familiar with the federal and state resources. Uh, I'm able to assist them. I, I understand the CalVet Cal benefits because I've used most of them myself. Um, but also, um, if they need more specific information, I can actually contact their link in their county and get uh, because they are the subject matter experts and get them the additional resources that they need. And then we provide leadership and advocacy, advocacy to local communities. We attend the collaboratives, we, uh, whether it's Zoom meetings, um, we get involved in our communities because we want to ensure that every veteran is aware of their benefits. Um, it's never too late to take advantage of those benefits in many cases. Um, and if there's any new and additional benefits that are available to them, we want to make sure they're aware of it as, as well as finding out the needs that they have in the community. Next slide, please. So we want you to get connected to benefits. And uh, like I said, I was the poster child. I didn't realize I could take advantage of a lot of things until 10 years ago. So if you're looking for employment and training, um, EDD has dedicated staff that can assist you with em employment opportunities, resume writing. They're co-located in the America's Job Center of California. Um, they have the tools, the resources, the printers, the packs and machines that you can use. And in these cases, these lobbies are closed, but you can still call and make an appointment. Um, CalVet, California State Benefits, that's what CalVet is all about. Um, but it's the County Veterans Service Office who kind of administer those benefits, be it federal or state. Um, and even though their offices are closed, they're doing usual business in an unusual way. So they can make an appointment, uh, they can email, they can fax, they can scan to you, uh, phone conversations. Um, so they're still doing, you can, you can find out, if you can file for compensation, find the status of your claim. Uh, get your DMV paperwork, college tuition fee waiver, so they still can assist you in all those benefits that you're entitled to. And then healthcare, this is something we shouldn't neglect. Um, I became enrolled in VA healthcare about 10 years ago. It's been unbelievable. 
Um, if you need to uh, apply for benefits, you can either apply for them online. You can call your VA medical center or clinic and they can assist you over the phone by asking for eligibility. And then the vet centers also are available. Uh, they will triage individuals. Both of these healthcare agencies are doing things on a critical care and urgent care need basis. Um, but I know that my appointments have been done via telehealth and via Connect, and I use uh, the My Healthy Vet uh, for my prescription and pharmacy needs. So take advantage of all these benefits, um, and they are there for you. Oh, there's the link. Okay. Next slide, please. So if you remember nothing else, that's my contact information. And you don't have to be from the Central Valley, one of my, my counties. You can call me. I can assist you. And if I can't, I'll get you in touch with the link in your community. So thank you for your service and enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you so much, Annette. That is such um amazing information and you are such a great resource for everyone out there. So thank you to you and all the our lo our links in the areas. Um, with that, we're going to pass the floor over to Julene and Julene's going to go over um, servicing webmen veterans in California. Julene, are, are you there? I am. Hello. You can go to the next slide. Good morning, folks, and thank you very much, Jen. Um, I am Julene Karikas. I am from the CalVet Women Veterans Division at, at the headquarters in Sacramento. And as Jen said, I'll be going over California Women Veterans and more specifically our division and our mission, our goals, and pretty much our purpose. Now, uh, Jen, go ahead, next slide. Before I start, though, um, our division did go through um, a big change at the beginning of this year. Um, I'd like to welcome, if Sochi is there, our Acting Deputy Secretary of Women Veterans Affairs, Sochi Rodriguez, Rodriguez Murillo, to just say a few quick words before I begin the, um, our presentation, if she's there. She was in and out today. Sochi, are you there? No, she's not. Okay, that's fine. So she is our new Acting Deputy Secretary, and we're very excited to um, have her on board. And um, don't uh, don't uh, oh hello sorry I I'm cutting out a little bit uh, go ahead and go to the next slide Jennifer so just to do a quick overview what I'll be talking about today is California women veterans uh, just our quick demographics in California nationwide some of the experiences and challenges uh, they experience how we can better support our women vets in California and then subsequently um, how our division specifically helps. Next slide. Women veterans are a significant portion um, of, of California. We are 10% of the veteran population and we double that um, in our National Guard and our reserves. And comparatively, we match that of, of our nationwide women veterans. Next slide. What's interesting about women veterans is, and what's unique about us, is that when we get out of the military, when we separate or um, when we get out, we are we generally tend to be in the prime of our economic age and professional age, which is 48 years old compared to men who are generally around 62 retirement age. We're also a lot more diverse and um, we are generally more likely to have served in recent conflicts and we're more likely to be employed once we get out. Next slide. Some of the experiences women veterans um, in their health that we see is that we generally, compared to our civilian peers, have better overall health. And this is probably because we've just come out of an institution where we have free health care. And then once we get out, we do have the opportunity to have the Department of Veterans Affairs health care system at our tips. Um, so we do have better access to care. We have better continuity. Um, we are better physically fit. And again, uh, compared to our civilian peers, we're more likely to have food security and employment. Next slide. Uh, even though we come out of the military with, um, with some really great starts, we do see that um, we do have higher health challenges that are pretty unique. In fact, in 2015, this is the most recent statistics from the VA. 
um, they find that their number one VA service connection is PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder and depressive disorder. We also have higher chronic diseases such as arthritis, cancer, um, COPD, which is um, chronic, uh, chronic obstruction pulmonary disease. Next slide. And as you saw at that last uh, slide, number one in connection disabilities for women vets is PTSD. So mental health challenges are really huge among women veterans. And we find that the rate of suicide among women veterans is 2.2 times higher than non-women veteran. Um, and we also find that women, so MST uh, is uh, military sexual trauma is not exactly um, a disease. It's actually an experience. So what results from the from MST or military sexual trauma is PTSD. Those are the actual symptoms of that of that particular uh, experience. And they have found that MST has been found to be more traumatic and debilitating than sexual assaults and rapes in the civilian context. And that's really important to understand. And I'm going to say that one more time just because it's so important to to understand. MST has been found to be more traumatic and debilitating than sexual assaults and rapes in the civilian context. And that's because we find that in the military, these are our brothers and our sisters that we rely our, we rely our lives on. And so that's obviously very different in the civilian context. And so when our brothers who we rely on to stay alive out there, um, when we get deployed into combat zones, it's, it's especially tragic. Uh, next slide. Uh, some of the unique challenges uh, that we find in women veterans uh, that I'm going to highlight on this particular slide is the lack of recognition. As Annette Hulliver had mentioned earlier, she didn't realize that she was a veteran and had to re reset her mind to understand that she is. And uh, her story is not unique. For example, um, my husband, so my husband is also a veteran and I'm a veteran and we went into an uh, I'm not going to say it. we went into a veteran organization to try and find out if that was a good fit for us if we'd like to join and as soon as the both of us walked in all of the 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 men that were in there went directly to my husband and gave him the full rundown of what they offer they thanked him for his service they asked if they could do anything for him if they could buy him a drink and then they turned to me and they asked if they would if i would like to join their auxiliary so those are some of the things that we're fighting against in this culture is that women veterans are veterans as well. And so when we can try and flip that script and try and tell people that to just automatically assume women are veterans too, it helps the, the narrative. Next slide, please. And this is and so this is where we come into um, some of the things that we do to support women veterans. Like I said before, never assume, always just uh, just tend to always think that women, when you see them coming into veteran organizations, that they also served. And this is why uh, we have the California Department of veteran, Veterans Affairs Women's Division. This is where we come in. Uh, next slide. Go ahead, next slide. So our goal is to provide information, uh, advocacy, outreach, and support to women veterans and their families. We want to make sure that you are all represented when you go out into the world. Uh, next slide. So some of the things that we do uh, is we develop and we create a training that's specific to women veterans. We go out to other organizations and kind of tell them how they can better support women veterans. We assist with outreach in doing social media, in-person events, and um, we make sure that we get in contact with women through email as well. We also provide guidance for creating women veteran-specific events, outreach, and information. Uh, we also try and create and have a comprehensive list of community organizations that assist women vets in particular, in that particular county of war, women vets asking for help. Next slide, please. Some of the information and resources that we try and push out is, of course, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs because they provide direct resources. One of the important um, aspects of the VA that um, we like to, um, to talk about is the healthcare 
system and the women veteran program managers. There are, there's one in every single VA healthcare system. And in fact, we're gonna hear from one today uh, from, Kayla jo from Dr. Dehit Kayla Joseph. And they're specifically there to kind of coordinate women veterans and their healthcare. It's also important to know that the VA also has the Center for Women Veterans. That's a nationwide program through the VA. And there's this awesome training that's also on their um, website where it's, um, it talks about women veterans and their transition from the military into the civilian life. Next slide, please. And you can find all of that on va.gov. Um, so one of the things that we like to push particularly is um, in March, which we know as uh, Women's History Month, a lot of people don't know that the third week has been designated by our governor as Women's Military History Week. And we like to particularly highlight women veterans, obviously, during this, this, this time. And um, so you can do this. Uh, we, have a, we have a proclamation that comes from the governor that kind of states the history of women veterans, um, their contribution, uh, military women and their contributions to our history. And we try and send those proclamations out to the appropriate organization so they can award and recognize women vets in their counties and communities. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing that we do uh, is monthly statewide webinars. So before COVID and this COVID life, uh, we were actually doing this all the way back in uh, 2010 or 13 or 10 or 11, I want to say. And these monthly statewide webinars are specifically geared towards women veterans and the needs and the unique needs that they have. Um, we've currently now, because of the COVID era, have ramped up our webinars. So we generally have um, a couple of them per month. Um, they are free and they are recorded, just like uh, CalTAPS webinars are. And you can always find that on our website at www.calvet.ca.gov forward slash women vets. And that will be self-explanatory to find these webinars and other important information. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a fun one. The annual Women Veterans Reception, um, we do these every year, and it's where we recognize and we um, highlight a woman veteran in a community that have been trailblazers in their communities as women veterans. And these are really fun. Our um, secretary, uh, Dr. Mbassiani, is there to also recognize and encourage them and to really highlight their efforts. Because we want to remember that, again, women veterans have served and they've, they're doing just as much as their counterparts in our communities. So these are very exciting. And in the COVID era, we, we, we have created these to be virtual. They used to be in person and really fun to attend. They're usually an evening event as well. Next slide. One of the other aspects that we have in our division that we try and push is the women veterans roster. What this does is when you sign up to be a part of our listserv or our roster, you get um, specific information that is just for women veterans, things that have changed, updates, um, events, um, specific outreach. And currently we have almost 18,000 women veterans on here. And this will also tell you of any events um, that might uh, pop up that's again in your area. And so this is important that we encourage women veterans to go ahead and sign up for so that you don't miss out on any benefits or resources that will concern you. Next slide, please. Uh, we are online. As I mentioned, we have our own website. Uh, it is at www.calvet.ca.gov slash women vets. And the resources and, and information tab is really important because it kind of has all of your, um, anything that you might need as a woman veteran, it helps you to coordinate that and to find exactly what kind of help you need. And then to highlight the California Women Veterans Leadership Council, we have a website there that um, the chair will, uh, who is Olivia Chavez, she will, um, they, they have this council where women veterans come together throughout California to talk about the issues and how they can support and help women veterans as well. So we encourage you to look at that and see if that might be a good fit for you to join. Uh, go ahead, next slide, Jen. Um, so we also wanna highlight, as Jen said, um, just CalVet in particular, cause this is a one-stop hub. It literally has everything you could possibly need. Um, make sure you sign up for their Instagram, their Facebook page, we have a Twitter, and then the blog is the CalVet Connect. Um, this year for Black History Month, they have a lot of great stories from um, African-American men and women that we should all, uh, learn about and listen to our read of. Uh, go ahead, next slide, Jen. 
And as, a, as Annette had said, if you don't remember anything else about this presentation, I hope that you remember our contact information. It is if you need to reach out to us and have specific questions. Our email is womenveterans at calvet.ca.gov. And our phone number, this gets you directly to us, um, is 916-653-1402. Um, you can also find us on Facebook as Calvet Women Veterans. Thanks, Jen. Thank you so much, Julene. Um, did uh, Sochi, did you come on back online? Would you like to speak before we move forward? Okay. Uh, oh, just, all right. So, yes. She also might be uh, there to answer questions at the end if anybody has any questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much to. Uh, our Women's Veterans Division, you guys are such an, an amazing resource to women veterans, um, and we thank you for everything that you guys um, do to get resources and benefits out to women veterans. Um, with that, I'm gonna give the floor over to Dr. Joseph. Dr. Joseph's with the Women's Health Services. She's a program manager for San Francisco VA Healthcare System. Are you there? I am, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. Hi everyone, um, as was mentioned, I'm the Women Veterans Program Manager for San Francisco VA. So I am gonna be speaking specifically to San Francisco VA healthcare system and the services that we provide. But a lot of these services are things that exist at all VAs. So where that happens, I'm gonna try and also specify that if you're not in the San Francisco Bay Area, that um, just what services would be available everywhere. Next slide. And so at San Francisco VA, we do have a separate women's health center. It has its own waiting area and is what we call a comprehensive women's health center. So it has primary care, gynecology, mental health, social work services, nursing, all under one roof. We are headed in the direction of also getting a separate waiting area in Santa Rosa. We're in the process of building a new uh, clinic up there a new building. We already have a clinic up there, but we're building a new building that will also have one of these separate waiting areas for our women's health services. Next slide. And what we have at the Women's Health Center, as I mentioned, it is comprehensive primary care. So that means preventative health screening, including pap testing, osteoporosis evaluation and care, contraceptive counseling and management, menopause management, uh, sexually transmitted infection evaluation and treatment, weight management, urinary and incontinence evaluation and treatment, gynecology and reproductive health, mental health and social work. And then we have a couple of specialty clinics. We have a post-deployment clinic and a transgender health clinic. And both of those are meant to be uh, wraparound services where you can see one provider or you can see providers of many, dis uh, many different disciplines on one day. Next slide. And then we also do have women's health care in our community-based outpatient clinics, or CBOX. These are pictures of all of our CBOX. So we have those in uh, downtown San Francisco, San Bruno, Eureka, Ukiah, Clear Lake, um, all, of, all of our community-based care. And so our, um, and Santa Rosa that I, I mentioned earlier as well. So community-based outpatient clinics are staffed with what we call designated women's health primary care providers. And these are folks who are trained to deliver comprehensive primary care, including pap testing. So we don't have gynecologists perform that. That is part of our primary care. Gynecology is separate for um, services beyond pap testing. And uh, all sites have women uh, veterans health liaisons, as well as these designated women's health primary care providers. Next slide. And so our designated women's health PCPs, these are folks who are fully proficient in providing the complete range of primary care, including comprehensive women's health. Uh, they participate in ongoing continuing education in women's health, and they're supported by our women's health program at large. Next slide. And then our women's health liaisons, these are typically nurses, and they are there to help coordinate care either between the community-based clinic and our main facility or the community-based uh, clinic and care that is outside of the VA. Next slide. And we take a whole health approach, and what that really means is that we take an approach of really viewing folks as a whole person. So that means 
cultural, spiritual, physical, mental, social, all of the needs that somebody might have, we are attempting to incorporate all of that into somebody's healthcare. It also means that we have offerings for things like yoga and acupuncture, um, chiropractic, and we're working on getting more and more of that offered within the VA as opposed to having to refer out for those services. Next slide. And as I mentioned before, we do have gynecology services. Those are located at our main campus and at Santa Rosa. Um, gynecology is covered even if you're at a VA that is not close to a campus that has a gynecologist. So for example, um, our folks who are up in Eureka are quite a bit of ways away from Santa Rosa and so, and as well as the main campus. And so they would get their gynecology uh, and care in the community as opposed to getting that uh, at our main facility. Always have the option to come to the main facility, but if it is easier to get it in the community because that is closer than we work with folks, that's actually why we have the women's health liaisons. Um, and then uh, some common reasons for referral are family planning and contraceptive counseling, preconception and basic fertility services, complex menopausal management and precancer screening and management. Next slide. And then family planning and fertility. Uh, we do have family planning and fertility services. I'm gonna go to the next slide for that to talk about the, that in a little bit more depth. We have a maternity and postpartum care coordinator. All VAs have either a maternity and postpartum care coordinator or the Women Veterans Program Manager takes on that role if they don't have a separate person in that role. And uh, the Women Veterans Program Managers also have additional information about fertility assessment and benefits, and that varies a little bit depending on the VA and depending on somebody's particular medical history. So if you have questions about that, I would encourage you to reach out to your Women Veterans Program Managers, um, either myself if you're in the San Francisco area or one of the other WVPMs if you have questions for other VAs. Next slide. And then mammography services, mammography is covered. Not all VAs have a mammography machine on site. We are one of those VAs that does not have a mammography machine on site. Um, I believe Northern California VA healthcare system does have one at one of their facilities. And what really dictates whether or not a VA has mammogram on site versus whether we cover it out in the community is how many women veterans are enrolled in our system. So uh, in order to safely perform mammograms, we have to have a certain number of women who are routinely getting mammograms. So it's really dictated by the size of the system um, more than anything, but we do, uh, we still do coordinate that care. And our mammography coordinator is the same person that you just saw, Alana Diaz, who's our maternity coordinator as well. Next slide. And then we do offer weight management services as well. I know I mentioned that's part of the uh, Comprehensive Women's Health Center. We do have nutrition services available at the VA, and also you can find a lot of information on uh, the VA's website at www.move.va.gov. Next slide. And mental health services uh, are available at all of our sites, and that is true at most VAs. As I mentioned, we do have women's health specialty services at that comprehensive women's health center. Um, and in a world where we're providing much more telehealth, um, telecare is also available to most of our veterans. Next slide. And the services that we provide for mental health, we offer general mental health counseling, uh, trauma counseling, including counseling for those who experience trauma during or outside of military service, substance abuse counseling, psychological support groups and skills-based groups that are specific to women. Uh, we offer sex therapy services to address changes in sexual functioning or satisfaction, and then family and relationship counseling for any kinds of families or relationships. Next slide. And then we talked a little bit in one of the previous presentations about, um, about MST, about military sexual trauma. And we do want folks to be aware that care for MST is free at the VA and at vet centers. Next slide. And that means that all VAs have what's called an MST coordinator. Danette Montoya, whose information is here, is the MST coordinator at the San Francisco VA. And then she has counterparts at all of those um, community-based outpatient clinics that I mentioned before. Every VA has a MST coordinator. And I believe the information for that is going into the chat for folks to, to locate 
MST coordinators at other VAs. Next slide. And then a lot of VAs also have peer support specialists. Uh, we have peer support specialists in San Francisco. We don't currently have a peer support specialist who's specifically dedicated to women's health, but we do have serving in those peer roles. And these are folks who can act as role models, teach uh, skills, problem solving, um, maybe uh, run groups. They have lots of different roles in different clinics. Next slide. And then diversity is really our strength in VA. Um, I will share a little bit more about that in the next slide. So here at uh, San Francisco VA Healthcare System, we recognize that diverse populations have distinct needs and we train our staff in culturally and clinically competent care. We're committed to providing care to all who self-identify as women, as well as veterans and family who identify as transgender and non-binary. And we strive to provide the most respectful care possible and are here to work with you to identify ways that we can continue to improve our services. Next slide. And just some fun facts about diversity and women veterans. Women are the fastest growing population in VA. Transgender people are two to three times more likely to serve in the US military with transgender women serving at particularly high rates. Lesbian and bisexual women are more likely to serve, making up about 2.9% of military service. And African-American women are more likely to serve, making up about 19% of women vets. Next slide. And we do a lot of in-reach and outreach. Um, all VAs are going to have different programs for that. Some of the things that we've done in recent years, these are pictures from a baby shower that we had for new mothers. And then we um, also will usually do a Wear Red campaign for um, heart health awareness in February when we're able to do things in person. We also uh, participated in something called the I Am Not Invisible campaign where we took pictures of women veterans and uh, shared their stories in an art uh, gallery and event for the folks who participated. And many of those pictures are now up and available um, to, to view around our hospital, our main site and also are available on our Facebook page. Next slide. And then we also participate in LGBTQ Pride events, both uh, one that happens usually in June at our site, and then we also participate in street fairs like San Francisco Pride. Next slide. And then we also participate in things like the annual uh, Veterans Mental Health Summit, and we've had a couple times where women veterans have been uh, one of the focal points of those outreach summits, and those are usually done in conjunction with Swords to Plowshares, which is an excellent, uh, another excellent organization. Next slide. And then also I mentioned our Facebook page, um, Facebook and Twitter, we share a lot of information about events that are going on as well as just general healthcare information and things that are helpful to know. Um, I would highly, highly encourage folks to follow those pages to find out more information about what's going on at your local VA and most of the, the VAs will have them. So not just San Francisco VA. Next slide. And uh, this is just some of our staff. Our staff has uh, actually grown and changed a little bit since this picture was taken. This is one of those uh, Go Red events that we did a few years back. But we definitely would love to, to see all of you in our healthcare system. And uh, I believe in the next slide, we have some contact information for that. Yep. So for folks who uh, aren't enrolled, um, these are the contact numbers to get enrolled in either San Francisco specifically, or there's a more general enrollment line that's listed here as well. If you are already enrolled and you want to make an appointment, that number at the top will take you directly to our Women's Healthcare Center. And then uh, my contact information is listed there at the bottom. Next slide. And then um, as you've seen in a couple other presentations, there's also the Women Veterans Call Center. Uh, the Women Veterans Call Center is a way to get somebody on the phone sometimes a little bit quicker than at your local VA. And what they're gonna do is usually connect you to the Women Veterans Program Manager, the site that you are living closest to. Next slide. And then uh, also another fantastic resource for veterans is the Veterans Crisis Line. Um, there's a ton of information on their webpage about uh, crisis management and support, including things like how to obtain 
gun locks if you need those. Um, but they are a service that is available 24 seven for folks to call and those gun locks if you need them are available at all VA campuses. Next slide. And then there's also a lot of apps. So um, all of these apps are free. There are some that are specific to women. There's some that are for PTSD uh, that are not necessarily specific to women, but are really, really great resources. And so if you've never checked out the VA apps, I'd encourage you to take a look at those as well. Next slide. And these are just um, some more examples of online resources. So we also have uh, ways of communicating with providers and setting appointments online through My Healthy Vet. Next slide. And that is it for, for me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph. Um, we really appreciate all that information and um, what a great resource to be able to go to the VA hospital and know there's so many different resources and different programs that are out there for us. So thank you very much for being here. Yeah, of course. So with that, <laughs> thank you. So with that, we've come to the portion in our um, presentation where we're doing virtual questions and answers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give Derek uh, Rose, the CalTAP training coordinator has been fielding all those questions. I'm going to give him a moment to organize those. And while he's doing that, I'm going to introduce and have Zochi, our acting um, deputy secretary for Women Veterans Division, Sochi Rodriguez Maria. Um, have her talk to you guys for a minute about uh, what she's doing and what uh, what they have to offer. Are you there, Zochi? Thank you very much. Good morning. I uh, appreciate um, everyone joining us today, uh, our organizers at, at the VA and in CalTAP and the San Francisco VA Healthcare System. I'm Sochi Rodriguez Murillo. I am the Acting Deputy Secretary to uh, Women Veterans, and uh, I have been with the agency since November of 2019. Uh, prior to that, spent 10 years uh, with the state legislature. I'm an Army veteran and a sergeant in the Army Reserve. Um, so right now, I look forward to hearing your questions and your suggestions on what we can do to improve services and continue to work with our with our partners. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for the collaboration. Thank you so much. All right. So, Derek, are you there? I am, uh, Jennifer. So, um, uh, yeah, that's a great presentation. Uh, thank you so much. So as I've, uh, I've been combing through the chat questions and we only had a couple come in um, one while you were doing the CalTAP benefits overview. Um, that question, I, I wanted to just kind of hold off until this Q&A portion. It was regarding uh, the DM fee uh, registration fee waiver. Um, so I just wanted to just clarify that uh, the best starting point for that is going to be your local county veteran service office, and they can help you make the determination uh, for your eligibility uh, for that program. Typically, uh, to qualify for that program, you need to have a service-connected disability that uh, impairs your mobility. So that county veteran service office that we mentioned a few times, that's going to be the best place to get started, and then they can make sure you're uh, filing everything with the DMV directly um one other question that i saw i think it was to everybody in the chat i think it was during kayla's presentation the question was just are there any c box in southern california so i will just defer to kayla if she has an answer to that question Yes, there are definitely CBOX in Southern California. Um, I am less familiar what, with what they all are, but they're mostly linked to the, the big systems in Southern California are Los Angeles, Long Beach. Um, I believe there's actually a couple systems in Los Angeles, San Diego. Um, Fresno are all other healthcare systems that are out there that have their own CBOX. So if you go to the VA website for whichever major city is closest to you, that is going to give you a list of what other CBOX are available as well. And some of them can be rather far away from the major city. So for example, um, I mentioned Eureka for us. Eureka is about a five hour drive. From San Francisco. So it um, would be usually the closest city, but the closest city could be quite a drive uh, away from where that CBOC is. Perfect. 
I think there's um, maybe one or two more questions that came into everybody on the chat that I think everybody would be able to see. I think uh, one of the questions here is from Alexis. She uh, they say, do the women's veterans medical facilities also accept active duty? So do the do the VA healthcare facilities accept active duty? Um, it depends on the uh, VA. So most of them do not, although there are some that have crossover. So I know like Hawaii, for example, is on a military base and does cross uh, crossover care. But we do um, accept folks as soon as they are as soon as they are discharged. So often um, what we do is coordinate with folks when they get out. Perfect. And it looks like there's another question from Abraham. The question is, I believe that all programs mentioned here are in addition to the federal VA programs. Is that correct? Um, yes, that's correct. So, um, you know, more specifically with our program, the CalTAP program and the California Veterans Benefits Overview, that is all designed to, you know, also supplement your federal VA uh, benefits as well. Um, you know, we do not administer the federal benefits. Uh, you know, with CalVet or CalTAP, but our purpose is to plug you into those federal VA resources and, you know, to assess your eligibility for state-specific benefits. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what benefits and programs you're speaking in reference to. Um, but yes, we're we're designed to supplement all of your VA, your federal VA benefits as well. Okay, another question. Uh, this is from Maricela. What are the waivers in college for dependents? Um, so that goes back to our college intuition fee waiver program for veterans dependents and Jen touched on it a little bit in the beginning. Um, so that program waives the tuition and fees at any state school um, here in California, whether it's UC, CSU, or a California community college. Um, but you as the veteran would have to have a service-connected disability. Uh, so if you have that eligibility, um, and depending on what the level of your service-connected disability is, you would visit your county veteran service office, and they will process that application for the tuition fee waiver, and then that's what you would present to the school um, to actually um, waive those fees. So just remember it has to be a state school and that student uh, needs to be a resident here in the state. As the good news is, and we get this question all the time, is does the veteran have to be a California resident? Um, the answer is no. It's just the student. So if you separated active duty and you're living on the East Coast, but your children, you know, still live out here in California, they would still be eligible for that program. All right, another question that came in uh, from Maria says, would you happen to know if the yellow rib ribbon program is only for dependents? <clears throat> um, that's no, uh, that also applies to the veteran. So if you know you are attending school at a maybe a private institution, that's a little bit more expensive than what the VA would cover, um, you still would have that eligibility. I would just check with the school to see what their yellow ribbon program contribution is. Um, but no, that's that's not strictly for dependents. Okay. I'm just going to read through the questions. I think everybody else can kind of see them. Um, it says, are female reservists who do not have Title X orders or active duty days eligible for these services? And I probably have to defer back to our Women's Veterans Division to answer that question more specifically. Anybody? Anybody? Sorry, this is Julene. Uh, so that question, female reservists who don't have Title X orders or active duty days uh, eligible for these services, um, it depends on the service. Um, because you're right, Title X orders does give you a DD-214, which opens the doors for you to get a lot of these veteran um, benefits. So it just depends on um, what exactly you're applying for. 
that's the that's the short answer. So if you have something in specific, um, the benefit, Erica, that you want to know about, just reach out to our division, women veterans at calvet.ca.gov. Um, all right, I think one more question here regarding driver's license. Um, the question is, can you get the driver's license form via PDF or email? I would just have to clarify if you're speaking in regards to the veteran driver's license designation or the motor vehicle registration fee waiver. Um, as it's written, that's related to the uh, driver's license form. It's just, uh, called the VSD form you uh, can only get that at your local county veteran service office. They do not make that document public. So you would have to go in there, um, show them your identification uh, with a copy of your DD-214, and then they will give you the form uh, to take to DMV to have that designation printed on your driver's license. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. So with that, I just wanted to, um, completing all those uh, questions, I just wanted to point out that we do have some more upcoming webinars in addition to this one um, in February and March. So if you wanna take a screenshot of this, you're welcome to do that. Or you can also go onto our website and go down to uh, upcoming webinars on that CalVet or CalTAP portal that I was telling you about earlier. And, here is our contact slide. Please remember, um, give us a call if uh, if you need any assistance getting the links or any type of resources that you've heard about today. Um, please give us a call, email us, and we would be happy um, to serve you guys. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you for attending today, and um, I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your week.